So we've already seen how to create a new date time instance, which by default gives us the current date and time. Now, of course, that's not always useful. What we want to be able to do is set our own times. We want to be able to output times as well. And that's exactly what we're going to be covering in this part. So let's just start by creating a new date time instance again. You'll always want to start off by doing this because from this variable now, you can format the date, you can grab a timestamp, you can set your time zone, you can get time zones, and you can do a lot of other things. So let's look at a couple of basics about how we extract some information from date time. Now, the first way and probably the most popular way to actually format a date is to simply echo because we'll end up with a string. From that variable, we use the format method. And into this, we pass a string with a format. Now, I don't expect you to remember all of these formatting options. So what you can do is come over to the date part of the PHP library. And if you have a look down here, there are many different ways to represent different parts of the date and time. So we've got time just down here and we've got dates just up here. So for example, we could say something like D S and then M Y. So that might look a little bit odd, but if we come over, you can see that we get 15th. The TH here is represented by this capital S. Then we have August, which is the month and then the year obviously represented by Y. So if you ever are struggling to format out a date in a way that you want, head over to this part of the manual. I'll leave a link for you uh, within the course and you can structure your uh, output exactly as you want, format the dates exactly as you want. So the other way to do things is sometimes you want a timestamp. So let's say we wanted to get the current timestamp. Remember, this represents the current date and time. So to do this, we just say date get timestamp. This is a method like this. Obviously, we don't format a timestamp. So in this case, we just get out the current Unix timestamp. And you can see that that increments with each second. So if you're not too sure what a timestamp is, this is the amount of seconds since the 1st of January. I think it's 1970. Either way, this is sometimes useful. So we're going to be looking at time zones later. But while we're here, we'll just talk about how we actually extract the current time zone. So to do this, we can use get time zone like so. And if we just do a var dump on this, because this isn't actually going to work at the moment, we'll see exactly what we get here. So you can see we get another object now. So this is returning a new object. And this is a date time zone object. Now from this, we have uh, two properties in here, but we also have some other methods as well. So we have a method called get name, you may wish to grab the current time zone name. So in this case, you just say get name and chain that on. And then you get the current name. We already know it's UTC, uh, but that's useful if you do need to extract the time zone. So now that we've looked at a couple of ways just to grab the date, we're going to be looking at more of these later throughout the series. But now we want to look at creating dates in a different way. Now, this obviously sets the date and time to the current date and time. But what happens if we have a specific format that we want to create this from? So in this case, what we would do is not use new. What we want to do is use a static method instead, which we uh, access by this uh, thing here called the scope resolution operator. This is just two colons next to each other. And then we say create from format like so. And the first argument here is going to be the format that we want to create this from. Now, again, this all comes from the parameters just here uh, for the dates and times. So we can go ahead and insert this. Let's say we had some kind of date that looked like this 2016, like so at 1116. So let's say this was submitted via form. Well, if we wanted to take this date and then later manipulate it using date time, we would look at the structure of this and say, well, it's Y. It's separated by a hyphen. Then it's the month and the day. So M and D uh, lowercase are just like this. So we have the month and the day. And then just in here, we go ahead and pass in the date. So let's say that the uh, date here, let's just say date string is... 2016 11 16 we would just pass that into there and of course you can pass uh, it straight into here as well so now if we do a var dump on the date you will see over here 
that we get the following. So we get 2016, 11, 16. So for example, this is useful if you wanted to then go on and maybe check something in this date, manipulate it, or even output it in a completely different way. So for example, we might just want to say date, format, and then choose a completely different format. So we might want to say something like D, S, M, Y, and we would get the following. So it's really flexible. We just, just really depends on how you want to do this. So the next thing is if we want to create a date from a timestamp. So to do this, we use something called a setter. So we do pretty much what we did before, a new date time, like so. But then what we want to do is say set timestamp. So you may be working with a timestamp and then you might want to grab a particular timestamp and then format that in a way that you want. Now to get a timestamp, we can come over to a website that basically just gives you a timestamp. What I'm going to do is go and set these manually. So I'm just going to say 1989 go ahead and say human date to timestamp, grab the timestamp, and I'm just gonna place it into here like that. Now what I can do is if we just do a var dump on date, we'll see that we have the following. So we get 1989, 11, 16. And obviously from this, we can go and format it how we want. So we're just basically passing in different things, but we're always getting the same result. That's the great thing about this. So we can do what we did before, like so. Now, in this case, what you could do if you just didn't want to do this on two lines, you can be very quick and you can wrap your instantiation of your date time class in brackets. And then you can just pull this up like that. And that looks a little bit neater and it works in exactly the same way. So just a little tip there if you want to save some lines. So a couple of other ways of going ahead and setting the date and time, or at least one other way, we're going to go ahead and just create a new date time instance here. And then what we can do is we can say something like date, set date, and into this take three arguments. The first one is the year, like so, then it's the day, and then it's the, uh, sorry, the month, and then it's the day. So why would this be useful? Why wouldn't we just do it the other way? Well, in this case, if you, for example, had a form within HTML that allowed you to select the year, the month and the day separately, this would be a lot easier to actually pass it into date time because you just have three arguments that you pick up maybe via your post super global array and then you can just place it in there. And of course, we have a very similar method, you may have guessed, called set time, which takes the hour, the minute, and the seconds. So this will be 12.30 and then 30 seconds. So now if we just do a var dump on date, you can see here that we get the following. So we've got 12, 30 and 30 seconds. And then we have that date that we passed in. Pretty cool. So there are other ways that we can go about setting things, but we're going to take a look at them through the rest of the series. But hopefully this should make sense. We have a lot of flexibility in the way that we can set. And we've also looked at a couple of ways that we can get our dates out as well, specifically using format, which is probably the most popular way to go ahead and grab a date.